Today on Locked On Canadians, what is the latest on Carey Price? Also, does Kirby Doc make Christian Dvorak expendable? Is there a trade in the works? And we're going to talk a little bit about Matthew Kachuk, even though he hasn't named Montreal as a candidate. That could create some movement in the market for Montreal. All that's coming up on Locked On Canadians. For Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 661 of Locked On Canadians. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are moving into a three-a-week schedule, but we are still available free wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, talking about the Habs every single week. My name is Laura Sab, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined, as always, by Scott Matla, who just put on a hat while the intro was, was going on. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, and I was hoping you wouldn't say anything because my thing was I was going to switch the hat between segments to see if anyone else would catch on to it. <laughs> uh, I was trying to do it during an episode earlier this week, but we had some uh, technical issues, and I just kind of abandoned it because it was frustrating to try and do over and over again. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> it's hot, way too hot, ungodly hot outside to the point that it's like I am just tired all of the time now. Uh, because it's just so hot and sticky and gross outside from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to bed. And quite frankly, I don't need that in my life. I'm ready for fall to be here. And I know it's July 20th when we're recording this, but uh, fall, please. Now, thank you. A hundred percent. And I'm really sorry for ruining your bit. I didn't notice. If I'd noticed, if you told me before, <laughs> I wouldn't have said anything. And then we'd have waited for the listeners. Uh, we're going to have to come up with a new bit. All right, so let's talk real quick. Uh, Stefan Waite was on TSN 690 this morning and apparently has said that Carey Price will be ready to return, but also said something along the lines of he only or he really cares about winning a cup. It doesn't matter where. So that had people, first of all, rejoicing, thinking, all right, he's ready to go. And then thinking, oh, no, he's going to abandon us. And then some people were like, well, we don't need that cap hit anyway. But let's break this down a little bit. Stefan Waite is still in touch with Carey Price. Uh, he was fired by Mark Bergevin, um, but he is credited with uh, helping Carey Price move into the greatest goalie in the world stage of his career, which even though it's the twilight of Carey Price's career, I still think that there's some good goaltending in him, not to the extent that there used to be, but we saw when they went to the Stanley Cup final that he was instrumental. And then as soon as he broke down, again, apparently, apparently due to that injury that he sustained, that's when things fell apart, right? Like, I think that there's still some carry price left in him depending on how he's managed, how he's managed, how his ice time is managed. But at the same time, we don't know about his injury. So that Stefan White saying that carry price will be good to go this season, does that mean he knows something we don't? Does that mean he knows something that Kent Hughes is not telling us? That's the thing is it's, this is the first time we've gotten a definitive thing from anybody on this at all. We've gotten, you know, ah, well, they're waiting to see how the platelet injection goes and how this goes. And this is the first time someone's come on, but like, he'll be ready for the season. And I'm not surprised that Carey Price talks to Stefan Waite. They're obviously very close because they worked every day at practice, probably did goalie stuff after practice or during games and everything else. That's a different, it's a different bond between coaches. Yeah, there's defensive coaches. Yeah, you have coaches for forwards, the head coach and everything the goalie coach feels like such a different bond between players that I'm not surprised. And I'm not a hundred percent sure who the goaltending coach is now because Sean Burke was the head of uh goaltending analysis or whatever the hell they called it before he left uh, to go to Vegas, I believe. And my thought is, I wonder if they would bring Stefan Waite back into the fold in some way here with younger guys. You know, you have Caden Primo who struggled at the NHL level, but has been very good at the A level you have joe verbatic who's joining the organization you're going to have younger guys coming here in the future if they actually want to put you know together a goaltending department you could do a lot worse than having stefan wait there and to go to the other comments about carrie price you know wanting to win a cup 
Carey Price is probably the most competitive guy on the Canadians, bar none. He doesn't show it like Brendan Gallagher does or anyone else, but like you can't tell me that Carey Price is not likely the most uh, competitive player on this team, and he wants to win. He always wants to win. He's never not wanted to win uh, at games that he's been in. And I think a lot of people have thought, you know, it's up in the air. Is he going to stay or will he uh, go elsewhere to chase a cup if he's healthy? And the hard part is you're going to have to find someone to take that contract. And it's not easy. I know we got a question about this in the mailbag last week and we kind of touched on it. But having it definitively out there in the ether from someone who's very close to him makes it feel very real. And the Canadians without Carey Price, he feels very tied to them and the history and everything that goes along with that. He wants to win a cup here, but it will also not stop him from going elsewhere to win a cup if he needs to. Uh, and I think that's a very real possibility we need to get ready for. He probably won't do it as a starter, but he will do it as a big part of a team. And it's it's a very weird world to imagine the Canadians without Carey Price. He's been here almost two decades at this point since he was drafted, which is a wild thing to say. That's incredibly, incredibly true. Uh, quick note, Eric Raymond is the current goaltending coach, the Montreal Canadiens. Berge Van Hardem, after he uh, farts to fan weight, there was a period of time without a Canadiens goaltending coach. I believe the Laval goalie coach was working with the, with the Canadiens goaltenders. Um, and they are... Uh, they seem happy with him. They haven't changed that out just yet. There's a possibility, though, as you said, if somebody has been so successful with Carey Price and the Canadians are serious about keeping Carey Price, there could be a possibility of bringing Stefan Waite into the fold. But at the same time, the fact that he's talking to news organizations and giving people news that Kent Hughes is not giving, that makes me a little bit suspicious about the potential rockiness of that relationship. I also kept wanting to call the Canadians uh, goalie coach Eric Francis, and that's not... That's not who it is. Um, we will we get to the get flames to... in a second, Laura. <laughs> We're going to get to that momentarily, I promise you. <laughs> uh, a little bit, exactly. So so I think for me, like I'm still cautiously optimistic that Carey Price will be able to play. And the question is, what level will he be able to play at, play at and what number of minutes he'll be able to play at? And Scott, as you pointed out, Kevin Poulnet was re-signed by the Laval Rocket. And Caden Primo is currently without contract. He is an RFA, and I'm assuming talks are ongoing or going to start. Yeah, so when they signed Philippe de Rosier and Joe Verbatic, my thought was, okay, that's cool. And they have Montembeau. That's cool. What's going on? I was already kind of suspicious one way or the other, and now I'm even more so that Kevin Poulin's on a one-way deal. He's staying with the Rocket, like guaranteed. He's going, he proved that he and Caden Primo work very well as a 1A, 1B, and that allows DeRosier and Verbatic to stay in the ECHL um, and then be called up if they need an extra body on a road trip. Owen Savory also attended uh, development camp as well, and I think he's likely someone they're going to keep around in the fold on a PTO and keep around the team he was there with the playoffs. I'm very, very suspicious that something's in the works here. We haven't heard much about Caden Primo negotiating, and I don't know if they're trying to work out term or if they're trying to work out he's part of a package for something and they have more faith in the Dobish and the um, D show in the fold than they do Caden Primo at the NHL level, which feels unwise, but it might just be that Habs gut feeling. I don't know what's going to be happening here though something feels very very much like the other shoe is waiting to drop in terms of goaltending stuff and we've got over a month until we're going to find out uh, until uh rookie camp and all this other stuff starts so uh when we get to there we get to there so until then i guess we wait and see which has been the story of this entire summer so far Right. And wait and see has been a lot of the story of Carrie Price so far. Uh, I will say, though, that I'm not ready to call it on Caden Primo's NHL career. I believe he's shown too much potential at the AHL to give up on him just yet. However, he does need to prove himself at the NHL level. So we'll see what happens with his contract, his play. And just because we're recording this on Thursday night, uh, Ken Hughes is probably going to sign him at some point and we're going to get a Friday morning announcement. That's my prediction. But in the meantime, <laughs> Matthew Kachuk 
has decided he doesn't want to stay in Calgary. He's made it clear to the team. And he, Montreal's not on a list of teams that he would like to be traded to. However, his availability might shake up the market for Montreal. And we're going to talk about that in just one moment. But first, Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. If you listen to this podcast, you will know Scott takes them hiking. I use them either for breakfast or as a 3 p.m. pick-me-up because they are so full of protein. They give you that energy that you need. They're good for you. They're low in calorie, low in sugar, high in protein, and they're all delicious. And right now they've got a flavor, the coconut brownie chunk puff. Now, if you're around a couple years ago, you'll know that the coconut brownie chunk was the best flavor. It was the voted, it was actually voted the best flavor. Uh, And now they have it in a puff version, which is essentially a marshmallow filled with protein covered in 100% real chocolate. It is like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. If you want to try Built Bar, again, that energy, that high in protein, low in sugar, delicious, delicious energy, you can go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. You can use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Because we know a lot of our listeners also care about the NFL and it's, I mean, it's almost NFL season. Which NFL stars will move the betting line the most? Starting on July 18th, Locked On is giving you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers of Bet Online. Available on July 18th onwards, Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, just like us. All right, so Scott. It was not a good sign when Matthew Kachuk elected not to go for arbitration. Uh, And then today it actually came out that he has told Calgary he's not interested in staying. So after Johnny Gaudreau signed in Columbus, Matthew Kachuk is now making leaving noises. Well, not making leaving noises. He is clearly stating he is leaving. (laughs) And I have two questions. One, what's going on in Calgary? And two... How does this affect Montreal? Well, my first thought is one, isn't Stampede like this past weekend? So like yeehaw and all that, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know much about Calgary Stampede except for there's food apparently. So Calgary. And cowboy hats. Yeah. Well, it's Alberta. I just assumed that was part of the fashion to begin with. Don't yell at me on Twitter. I'm sure you're all lovely people. Uh, my first thought with all of this was is that the Flames are doing what the Oilers we thought were going to do for the past several years. They got let down by their goaltending in the playoffs when they had such a dominant year between Kachuk and Gaudreau and Manjapani and all these players. Even Coleman. Uh, yeah, and it just it didn't matter because they lost because their goalie couldn't stop a beach ball. He Mike Smith them in the playoffs, basically. And I look at this and I go... Gaudreau leaving sucks, but you still have Kachuk. You have guys like Matthew Phillips and everything in the AHL on their way up. There's still free agents out there. They went and got Tyler Toffoli for a couple more seasons to keep this run going long term. And now it's all just kind of falling apart. And my thought with that is I kind of wish we had Calgary's pick next year instead of this or the one that they had in 2022 because I can't help but feel that the uh, Flames are going to be a little bit of a mess. They're likely still, I still think they can make the playoffs without Matthew Kachuk. I think they'll figure something else out, you know, and figure out something in a trade to get pieces they want to make the playoffs. That I can understand. How does this affect the Canadians in one of two ways? One, I just want you to imagine for a minute a Bra- uh, Brady Kachuk, Jesus, a Matthew Kachuk, Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield line, which feels very fun, a lot of goals, a lot of, Kachuk related shenanigans, but also the market now shifts back to a flames forward. Johnny Gaudreau was there when he went to Columbus. He did not say that thing that's going around Twitter for the love of God, check your sources on everything people. And for context, essentially Johnny Gaudreau wrote a player's tribune article explaining his decision to go to Columbus and somebody Photoshopped it to put in something that makes him seem extremely racist. Yeah, um, it was anyways, uh, my thought with that is now the market has changed in that everyone's going to shift their focus towards him. And Eric Francis said the the list that was released of teams that would go to is not true. 
I imagine every single team in the NHL has interest in Matthew Kachuk. If you don't fire your GM and get one who does have interest in Matthew Kachuk, he's extremely good. Like one of the best wingers in the NHL. Yeah. He's a pest and he can be a rat. He can also score a hundred points in his sleep and drive possession in all the right ways. And my thought is there are going to be teams that are looking for that. And if they miss out, they're going to shift their attention back to the Canadians now, whether that be Josh Anderson, whether that be Mike Hoffman, et cetera, the Canadians are back to playing second fiddle a little bit, which might bring down their asking price on some of these pieces, which if it's Mike Hoffman, fine, that's cap space. That's got to go out one way or the other, but I feel like we're now waiting for the Kachuk trade to happen before anything in Montreal happens, or some teams are going to find out what the flames want, which should be the world. And they're going to go, no and meet kent hughes's asking price or around his asking price i think then um here's the thing though i think like for me matthew kachuk is a everybody should be in on him player josh anderson is an everybody thinks they need him player mike hoffman is a throw-in so my question is can you take josh anderson and add mike hoffman and convince people that your offense is going to improve dramatically in that package i think you can because here's the thing mike hoffman is very good at the one thing he does he is very good at scoring on the power play and being a shooting threat do not ask him to do anything else do not ask him to be anything other than iga brand alexander ovechkin and you're fine mark bergevin got him thinking he can be thomas tatar which was stupid and dumb and bad and incorrect he can't do that. Um, so my biggest thought is if you ask him to play within where he needs to be or put in a system that rewards him where he needs to be, you're going to be perfectly fine. So it, it all comes down to good coaching. And I think a good coach can get a lot of the Hoffman. Same with Anderson, who I'm not keen on trading just because he's unique. But I do think that there are GMs out there looking at Josh Anderson and there are GMs out there that can go, Mike Hoffman might actually be a nice piece to add retained salary, this, that, and the other thing, but there there's stuff to be done. They are not unmovable at all. I also think that one of the things that, um, that is noted. So it leaked that essentially Kachuk's trading destinations or destinations that he wanted to go was the St. Louis blues, which is home for him. Um, and, than like all of the teams in states or cities with like the lowest taxes, right? So like Vegas was one of them, Florida, Tampa, all those were one of them. So then somebody said that that wasn't accurate. But at the moment that we found out that Vegas might be a destination, I was like, well, what other players is Vegas now going to give away for free if Matthew Kachuk would want to go there? And I love this Vegas fan, the notorious PNG, who replied to me saying, it is the chaos that I live for. How they pull it off is what fascinates me. So <laughs> I'm interested to see what happens. Like, it's not just about, you know, are the forwards on Montreal that they're trying to trade going to be valuable? It's also a little bit about what other teams do that will affect the market in general. And I think Vegas is going to be the chaos team to watch for unless they find a way to pull it off where, like, Kachuk goes where he wants. Now, if the person who said that that list is not accurate is is right then a lot of other teams including Montreal might be on there now i don't i don't think he wants to come to montreal that's not that's not going to that, that we like, don't not know that though we don't not know that i, okay. I would just like to present have few kachuk to everybody put him <laughs> opposite of slavkovsky and just have two very powerful dudes who doing powerful dude things put him and josh anderson on a line and just let them punch everybody in their way and score goals like there's, there's I'd options. like to see I'd like to see Matthew Kachuk and Josh Anderson on the line against the Ottawa Senators. That is what I want to no, see. No, because then then we're getting felonies and the game is canceled because <laughs> of putting people in handcuffs because two brothers are fighting and Josh Anderson threw Tim Stutzla through the end boards and he got stuck and now Sens fans want to try him for war crimes or something. I don't and know. Somebody got stabbed with a trident. Um <laughs> That will escalate quickly if it happens. Anyway, we're not we're not going to quit dreaming until we know all the information. But here's another thing that we want to speculate on in today's episode. Uh, and I want to say real quick, don't forget that tomorrow is our mailbag episode. So please send us your mailbag questions at LockedOnCanadians at gmail.com. Please put them in the comments in the YouTube to this episode. Uh, or you can tweet them at LO underscore Canadians. You can also tweet them at Scott Matla on Twitter. You can also tweet them at The Active Stick. You can also DM the Locked On Canadians Twitter account, LO 
O underscore Canadians. Please send your questions. We want your questions. It's the off season, Friday mailbag time, speculation, trade proposals, whatever you want. Ask us life advice. Don't listen to it though. All of that stuff. Please send us mailbag questions. In the meantime, in our next segment, we're going to talk about is Kirby Doc making Christian Vorak expendable on the Montreal Canadiens and a possibility for a trade. And that's all coming up in just one second here on Locked On Canadians. All right, then. Christian Dvorak. Even before Kirby Doc was obtained by the Montreal Canadiens, people speculated that he was on his way out because the Canadians need to clear cap space. And they also, people thought, all right, they're going to try and get Shane Wright in the draft. That didn't happen. But then they got another center. So now the Canadians have a first line center, a second line center, a third line center, and a fourth line center. But without Christian Dvorak, who becomes their third line center? Jake Evans. Um, my, but they my, also traded Ryan Paling, who because they're fourth yeah, <laughs> th- This is where things get complicated, and this is why I do think that that PLD trade is in the shoot somewhere right now, is I like Jake Evans. I like him a lot. I do not think he's a long-term permanent solution at the third-line center spot. As a fourth-line center, he's a great bonus who can play up as needed when there's injuries. And... If they just keep Christian Dvorak because they can't pull off the PLD trade, that's fine because I think Christian Dvorak is also a very valuable player. He has a lot of that non-flash. He just does little smart things with the puck. And it's not his fault that last year he got elbowed in the base of the skull and missed half the season and it went unpunished. He played very well. He was near a point per game. Shocking under Martin St. Louis when he came back. And I think having him as an option to rotate with Doc in certain situations, just like when we talked about if Shane Wright was coming or not, it's a he's a safe bet to be a perfect middle six pivot for the Canadians. And if they are going for Pierre-Luc Dubois, I imagine Dvorak is going back the other way. I can't see any other way that that works out because you cannot be paying your fourth line center four and a half million dollars a season as a team that's meant to be bad. I I can see him going back the other way, and Pierre-Luc Dubois is obviously a different mold, and it would change things up a little bit. But I don't know if, it, if Kirby Doc makes Christian Dvorak expendable. I think it makes their roles a little bit more flexible, though, in that I think Dvorak is going to be a guy that eats up some of their hard minutes. Nick Suzuki will as well. And they're going to work through this. They're going to have the entire preseason to figure out who can eat toughs, who can take offensive zone starts, and I think Kirby Doc's going to be the guy that gets some of those exploitation minutes that would have gone to whoever was saddled with Mike Hoffman last year. So I, I don't think he's expendable. Uh, he only becomes expendable if Pierre-Luc Dubois like, confirmed going to Montreal. Like That's the only time he becomes expendable at this point. I personally, I know that there's a cap space issue right now. I, I like Christian Dvorak starting the season with the Montreal Canadiens unless we're getting PLD, which, again, um, that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be an interesting topping of discussion until we figure out what actually happens with him. But Dvorak starting the season with Montreal gives them three, like a decent top nine, right? And then you've got Jake Evans, and we've talked about him before. He's a good supportive player, supporting player, right? Um, just like you just mentioned, he's he's flexible. He's like, he's a great fourth line center. So that's something that you want to keep. The Canadians are set down the middle, and then at the trade deadline, they can give Christian Vorak, they can put Christian Vorak at, at, on the market to get more either picks, prospects, something else that they need or want. Like to me, I like the start because he played so well under Martin St. Louis. Just imagine what he can do with a full season when he's not injured with a coach that he actually likes um, and that is bringing out the best in him. I like, I just, I, I think that I think that the time to trade Christian Vorak is not today unless the Canadians are getting Pierre Luc Dubois. I think that, like, I think he's going to, right now, I'm sure there's people, there are always people looking for centers, and he is a good two-way center. And I don't think that, you know, I don't think that the phones are silent on him. I just think that if you if you have a good season with him, or a good half a season, you can trade him in November if he has a great start. You know what I mean? Like, I think that he, starting the season with the Montreal Canadiens makes sense, but I also get why he is trade bait. And in the meantime, I wanted to mention real bef- real quick before uh, we let everybody go is that uh, today, I believe it was The Athletic, it was reported in The Athletic that um, the Penguins really, really didn't want to make uh, let Mike Matheson go. They, they just really wanted Jeff Petrie that they got worn down. 
Um, so we, you know, the, the longer we, we think about this and ruminate on this, the better this return has started to, to, to feel. Uh, and, and I think one of the things that was mentioned is that he really was thriving in the offensive system that Mike Sullivan had in, in Pittsburgh. Now, I'm going to admit to not watching a lot of Pittsburgh last year. I've watched a lot more of them in the past. I, I do think, though, that if Martin St. Louis system is supposed to be offensive and we don't know who their defensive coach is going to be just yet, like, I think that we're going to be happy with what we get from Mike Matheson. If this team was still coached by Dominique Ducharme, I'd be a lot more concerned about this trade in that Matheson would just be thrown into do everything. And it's the meme, just go random bull crap and make it work. Um, I think with everything points as being one of those analytics trades with that new department there. And I think working with Martin St. Louis and everything else is that they're going to put Matheson in a position to succeed. Do I think he will hit the same lofty like production goals as Jeff Petrie? No. Do I think he's still going to be a solid, potentially 30 to 35 point defenseman with expanded duties in Montreal? Now he's going to play a lot more than he did in Pittsburgh. He's not going to, or Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh, sorry, Western New York on the brain. Um, he's going to get the opportunities now that Chris Letang is not in front of him. There's not Shea Weber in front of him. He is the team's go to offensive defenseman now because the other option, they traded Romanov, they traded Petrie, uh, Norlander's not quite ready yet. Gooley, we don't know yet. Justin Barron, recovering from an injury. Jordan Harris, not known for that. Uh, David Savard, Chris Weidman. Not Wyden, known for who, that. Not known for that. Although, except for, although except his offensive numbers the, are so... Except for when he plays the Lightning. Every now and then, David Savard, when he plays the Lightning, is like, by the way, watch this. And he dangles three guys and scores a goal. That's the thing is that if you look at the underlying numbers, they should be using him in offensive situations, not defensive situations. I think that's an issue too with David Savard. Like I think that we're going to get a much better year out of David Savard this upcoming year if the Canadians use him more offensively and less defensively. Yeah, coach who knows what he's doing knows how to utilize player better. It is a very, very uh, big step forward from Dominique Ducharme. I, I'm I'm interested to see what Madison is. I've settled on I like this trade. Um, you do bring up though, that if Christian Dvorak is getting traded one way or the other, they did trade someone who was Taylor built for that fourth line center role and Ryan Paling right now. But you know what? One thing at a time, uh, they did sign a bunch of guys to NHL contracts. They could probably fill in that fourth line role in a pinch. Uh, Mitchell Stevens very likely will have a chance to earn that spot. I'm not thrilled by that prospect because I think they're going to be good AHL pieces more than anything else, but uh, again, we're waiting on a PLD trade that may or may not happen and a Matthew Kachuk trade that may or may not happen. There's a lot of things still up in the air that we're waiting on. And now that we are wrapping up this show, all hell's going to break loose. So just yeah, I think as soon as, as, soon as I edit it, as soon as I edit it and take the time to post it and schedule it, that's when all hell's going to break loose and we're going to find out everything that happened. So if you are listening to this uh, after that happens, we will discuss it on our next show. But in the case that nothing happens, we still have a mailbag, a Friday mailbag to do. So please send us your questions. I have to say you have all been bringing it lately with the questions. I've really thoroughly enjoyed all the discussion points that you've been giving us and the points that you've been making. So please keep them coming. Like I said, you can send them to us at LockedOnCanadians at gmail.com. You can also also leave them in the YouTube comments. You can also um, tweet them at us at LO underscore Canadians or send them in, as a direct message to the Locked On Canadians Twitter account. Uh, also, you can tweet Scott Matla on Twitter or me at The Active Stick. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you're subscribed to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. Uh, or it can be an and or situation. Just subscribe because starting next week, we've got some we're starting our summer content series, which involves a lot of interviews and fun people. Um, and we've got some surprise guests lined up and it's all coming this summer. So don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. Remember the mailbag is tomorrow and we will talk to you then.